While imaging the sun with a dedicated hydrogen alpha telescope can produce some spectacular images, viewing or imaging the sun in white light is a lot less expensive and something you can do with your existing telescopes with the addition of a filter or a solar wedge for a modest amount of money. The solar images you see here were taken with my little 60 millimeter Teleview 60 telescope using a Lunt solar wedge. And anyway, let's take a look at some of the options for white light solar observing. My main telescopes are a Celestron Evolution with an 8 inch Edge HD telescope, a Unistellar EV Scope 2, and a Teleview 60. I have filters available for all of my telescopes so I can observe sunspot activity on the sun or use them to watch the partial phases of a solar eclipse. For my 8 inch Edge HD, I have a snap on solar filter made by Celestron that fits over the corrector plate the same as the dust cover does. This makes for a very compact solar filter for the 8 inch SCT and that's why I have it. Others that fit around the outside of a telescope optical tube are a lot larger and thus it makes it a little bit harder to store and travel with them. For my Unistellar EV Scope 2, I have an AstroZap solar filter that uses Bader solar film and that does fit around the outside of a telescope optical tube. This filter is designed to actually fit around the Celestron C5, but it's also the perfect size for the EV Scope. The EV Scope 2 has a field of view that is just large enough to fit the entire sun or moon in the image, and here I've also added a Bader solar continuum filter in the front of the camera sensor to help produce a sharper image. I use the same filter with all my scopes when imaging since it only allows light around the 540 nanometer wavelength to pass through. This limitation helps to produce a sharper image as both the atmosphere and telescope lenses will refract light differently at different wavelengths and that can make it harder to keep all the wavelengths in focus at the same time. And since camera sensors are sensitive over a larger range of wavelengths in the human eye, this effect is magnified when imaging. And so by limiting the light that's passing through the sensor to around one single wavelength, you don't have to worry as much about the near infrared being out of focus or the other side of the spectrum blurring your image. You certainly don't need to add this filter, but it can help you to see a little bit more detail in white light, especially surface granulation. Now the downside, as you can readily see, is that the filter does make everything green. And so you may not like to see that green look of the sun when you're looking at it visually. Um, so it is a little bit of a detracting kind of thing to have that green view, but it does again allow you to see just a little bit more detail. For my Teleview 60, I'm using a Lunt solar wedge and I highly, highly recommend purchasing a solar wedge if you do have a refractor telescope for two main reasons. First, it's almost always going to produce a slightly sharper image than any filter placed over the front aperture of a telescope. And secondly, you can use it with any refractor, and for me, that's the biggest point. So if you have multiple refractors, or if you upgrade your telescope in the future, you don't actually need to buy another filter, you can just keep using the same solar wedge. Now the only limitation with this solar wedge, at least the one and a quarter inch solar wedge, is that you can't use it with a telescope of more than four inches in aperture unless you mask down that front aperture to four inches or less. I think with a two inch solar wedge, you can go up to a six inch a refractor, and most people obviously aren't going to have refractors more than that anyway. The solar wedge won't be able to handle the additional heat and light coming from a much bigger telescope, and the image is likely going to be too bright to view comfortably anyway. But for those four inch and under telescopes, uh, a solar wedge is certainly a great option, and just being able to use it on any telescope does make it a long-term purchase you can use and really not have to worry about buying any additional filters for your refractor telescopes. And you can see here a comparison between the live views of the sun through my EV Scope 2 using the Bader film on the front and the Bader solar continuum filter and the Teleview 60 using the Lunt solar wedge and ASI 290mm camera with the Bader solar continuum filter in front of the sensor as well. The EV Scope 2 video is just a screen recording on my cell phone and so the quality shown here isn't actually quite as high as what the telescope is actually producing as I'm not getting the full resolution with the screen recording but it does give you the general idea. The animation of the sun was created by taking the images of the sun on seven consecutive days and then making a video loop out of those images. I created each image by recording two videos on my ASI 290 camera, one of the top, one of the top two thirds of the sun and the one of the bottom two thirds of the sun and then I stitched those together after processing. I processed the data in PIP, AutoStagger, and then Registax, and then stitched the two parts of the sun together in Pixelmator, but any photo editing software will do. 
I tried to rotate each image so it would be in a proper orientation relative to the other images in the animation, but it isn't quite right here. You can see it's a little bit off from frame to frame, uh, but because there's no real strong east to west features on the sun, like Jupiter's cloud belts, it's really hard to get each one lined up individually. And so I do need to spend a little bit more time to get these uh, sort of perfectly lined up so everything is going you know, from left to right across the sun evenly and not kind of jogging up and down like you see here. But the animation does give you a good idea of what speed the sun rotates at and how much sunspots move from day to day. Anyway, the sun is heading towards solar maximum and so activity on the sun will be ramping up during 2022 and 2023 in advance of that solar maximum during 2024. Plus, there is a big annular solar eclipse across the southwestern U.S. during 2023 and another big total solar eclipse across the central and eastern U.S. during April 2024. So solar observing gear will be selling out in advance of those two eclipses, so you might think about picking up your solar filters this year if you do plan to observe those eclipses next year and in 2024. And adding a solar filter or a solar wedge is a great way to get more use out of your telescopes since, again, you can use them during the daytime. The nice thing about solar observing is that you can do it during the middle of the day instead of having to stay up late at night or get up early in the morning to catch a specific deep sky object. So if you haven't tried viewing or imaging the sun, give it a try. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.